Now, Israeli security forces have apprehended the perpetrator responsible for a stabbing attack Thursday in the West Bank that injured two Israelis. Meanwhile, the hunt for the Barkhan terrorist continues. Security forces continue to search for the man responsible for killing two of his co-workers at a factory in the Barkhan industrial zone of the West Bank on October 7th. Now, to tell us more about the security challenges, we're joined by Gonen Yitzchak, former Shin Bet agent, Israel's internal security body. Gonen, Thank you so much for joining us. Now, let's start by talking about uh, some of the challenges of searches like this in the West Bank. Why is it taking so long to find this man? Well, uh, when you search for a wanted person, he will try, first of all, to hide within the Palestinian uh, society. Usually he gets uh, help from uh, his family, from uh, friends. In this case, as, mu as much as I understand, uh, this uh, murderer uh, went to Nablus. Now, Nablus is a big city. It's very easy to hide in the old uh, section of uh, Nablus. Uh, and in the case that he gets uh, some help from uh, other Palestinians, it will be very hard to get, uh, to get to him, especially if he doesn't use any kind of uh, cellular phone or uh, any other uh, means of, uh, you know, uh, computer or anything like that. Gunen, it used to be the case that when uh, a perpetrator of an attack like this flees back into the Palestinian community, uh, the way for Israeli security forces to try to find them is to try to find the organization that they are affiliated with. But to what extent has the lone wolf uh, phenomenon changed the game for the IDF and the security forces? We know the IDF has implemented what they call a breathable closure around that community to try to find him. So they're constantly having to come up with new ways. Yeah, uh, I agree with you that uh, this uh, changes the game uh, uh, completely. Now, we don't know yet whether in this case uh, there is any organization behind uh, the attack or not. But if indeed it's a lone wolf, uh, the problem is when you don't have leadership, when you don't have an organization, when you don't have in, in, uh, infrastructure, it will be very hard, uh, first of all, uh, to stop it in advance. Because when other people know about uh, what uh, your plans, then it's easier uh, to infiltrate uh, the organization and get more information. And when you have a lone wolf, uh, it's almost impossible. And when you uh, search for a wanted person, usually the organization helps him. Meaning, if you have any kind of uh, human uh, source, uh, someone that works within the organization, works with you, it will be easier to get uh, information. In this case, I really don't know whether the, uh, this uh, terrorist uh, is part of any kind of organization, whether it's a lone wolf, but it's very hard to do, deal with it. On what level would you say that Palestinian security forces are cooperating with this investigation? I think that uh, most people don't understand that uh, the cooperation between Israel and uh, the Palestinian security forces uh, during the last years uh, was something dramatic. Uh, the Palestinian uh, uh, security forces stopped many terror attacks. And actually, at the same time when uh, uh, Abu Mazen was accused by Israel of uh, uh, fueling uh, terrorism, actually his security forces helped Israel uh, to stop it. Now, in, in, in these days, I don't uh, really know how much, if there is any cooperation between Israel and the Palestinian uh, security forces. I believe there is, but, you know, in this uh, situation, when Israel is uh, trying actually to destroy the PA, I don't know how much motivation uh, the security, the Palestinian security forces have to cooperate with Israel. And as we mentioned, the manhunt is still underway, and that's certainly a story we'll be following Definitely. closely.